Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Getting ready to install some newel posts here. These are solid posts. I thought I'd make a good video showing you some tips and tricks on how to put these in and how I go about installing the shoe rail and everything. So I've already got everything fitted as you see here and I'm just gonna disassemble this and kind of walk you through the process on how we get to this point and then get these newels installed so that they'll be rock solid. The first thing I'm gonna do is just pop these out and I'll show you what we've got going on underneath this shoe rail. I call this piece that's laying on the flat here a shoe rail. Some of you might call it something different. And then here on the face, we have another board. You could call this a fascia board or a freeze board one of the two, but those are the components that make up this assembly here. Now you'll notice a few different things going on here. We've got some holes, we've got screws in the subfloor, we've got our board here, we've got pinch dogs and biscuits in here. So this is what's going on. The way I like to start is with my fascia board right here. I like to get that piece cut in get it nice and level across or running with the floor one of the two but this is going to this edge right here is going to be our starting point our handrail 36 or 38 inches higher is going to follow this exact parallel line so this is an important part of the process right here now usually i have a three quarter inch thick uh, one by 10 or one by 12 skirt board and I like to just go ahead and use a one by for this piece also and then plane it out flush right here. I've got two number 10 biscuits with glue and then pinch dogs to draw that together. After that's dry, we'll pull those pinch dogs out and sand that nice and flat. Now this board laying on the flat, I call a shoe rail board, but we wanna get that thing nice and flat uh, shimmed across here. And a lot of times the floor is very inconsistent. This house is actually a remodel, so I've got different stuff going on. But the way I like to do this, again, I put this fascia on first because that gives me this nice straight edge. And from there, we can shim across perfectly level. To do that, I use inch and five eighths drywall screws. Fine thread works best for me. You'll want a drill set on first speed, that way it's spinning slowly, and a torpedo level. And you'll just simply use your torpedo level to shim this straight across, and the drywall screw will be the shim, and this actually goes really fast, and it's very, very precise and accurate. And then before we put this shoe rail board on, we'll put adhesive around the screws, that way it's never gonna go down or anything like that but this is a really effective method. As you can see here, I just scribed a line um, across here so I keep my screws all in the correct spot. I think it was five inches off this front edge, but it's a very precise way to do this. I think first we'll go ahead and install this board and then I'll talk more about these cutouts with the cavity where the newel post will drop into. But first let's get this installed. Now using screws like this is a great way to shim, but technically if I hit these screws really hard, it's possible that they could go down. So what we're gonna do is actually use adhesive around each one of these screws and that's gonna make these little shim points indestructible and it's going to make so they don't ever move just add a lot of strength to the whole thing just remember when doing stair work pl premium is your friend i use a ton of pl premium whenever i'm doing stairs Now we'll drop this shoe rail on, and I know about where I need it to be. I want to have a 3 8 of an inch reveal between the fascia board and the front face of this shoe rail, but I just wanna tack it. I don't want it to be nailed solid yet because whenever I put these posts in, I wanna be able to move it a little bit if I need to. So I'm just gonna take a couple 18 gauge brad nails on both ends and that's all I'm gonna put in right now. Now there are different techniques for installing newel posts, whether they be box newels or solid newels like these. 
but in general, I like to drop my solid newel posts down into the framing if at all possible. Now the reason for that is if you try and just cut this newel post off straight at 39 inches or whatever, you don't have a really good way to fasten it in a way that's gonna give it a lot of lateral strength. And why is that important in a situation like this? Well, here we're gonna have handrail connecting these two posts together right here. That's gonna give this post a lot of strength in this direction laterally. But the problem here is at the top of the stairs, you're gonna have kids that come running around the corner and they're gonna grab this post at Mach 15 and they're gonna use it to create speed running around here. It's gonna put a huge amount of tension on the post and it's gonna pull it. And if you don't have it mounted correctly, eventually it's gonna get loose going this way simply because of the way people will tend to come around it here and pull on it as they go down, especially kids. And that is why you want to drop your post down into the framing and that's gonna give the post a lot more lateral strength. And you're gonna see in a little bit how we fasten it, it's gonna prevent the post from ever coming loose in this direction. Now, personally, I much prefer box newels just because I'm a lot faster with them. Um, solid newel posts take me longer just because they're more tedious for me. And here's why. We want to be able to drop this post down into the framing, but yet at the same time, we need to install it so that it sits on top of the shoe rail. Now, if you're a magician, you could try to perfectly cut out the square notch for the post to drop down in and have everything go exactly according to plan, which will absolutely never happen. And that is why it's difficult to install these. So you'll notice on my post here, I have a rabbit, a relief cut around here. Now what this relief cut or rabbit allows me to do is have some margin for error whenever I drop this post down over the shoe rail. You'll see here, these posts are three and a half inches. My square cut out here is three and a quarter inches going both ways. That is because of the rabbit that I have on there. Now what this allows you to do is to be able to drop this post down and it looks perfect all the way around here because of that rabbit on there. So essentially what we're doing is actually creating a little bit of a cope joint here, which is just a pass through joint, but it's gonna give the appearance that this post is sitting flat and it's cut off flat on here, but it's actually not. But having that notched out like that and dropped into the framing is going to allow us to be able to screw through here into that post that way the post will not come loose this way. Now you'll see here on the center post, we've got that exact same thing going on. Allows this post to be dropped right in there and it looks perfect whenever it sits down on there. Again, we're essentially just creating a cope joint with that rabbit. It's just a simple pass through illusion going on there. It makes it look really nice. The other nice thing we've got going on here is this joist runs all the way through and then the rim joist runs into it right here. So I will actually have framing on two sides of this post and I can drop a lot of PL premium adhesive down in there. And then with my big screws, that'll make this post rock solid. Now I've got four holes already pre-drilled that are going through the three quarter inch skirt board, drywall, rim joist, and then into the newel. So we'll be going through all that material and that's gonna help lock things in really well. So now I'll start the process of putting these screws in and then making sure that I'm staying plumb in both directions as I keep pulling it tighter and tighter 
up to this rim joist. And then keep in mind, there's a ton of adhesive in there that is gonna be squeezing out as I pull this in. So I wanna just go a little bit at a time and make sure I don't overdo it in one direction or another because if I have to go back and I've already squeezed the adhesive out, now I've got a problem and I'm not gonna have a lot of strength. So I just wanna slowly keep working this in into position. So again, we ran four of these screws, one, two, three, four, through there into the bottom of the newel post. Looks good. Nice and plumb going both directions. Okay, center post is in, nice and square, got our four holes right there, notice how nice it sits on that shoe rail also. Setting this half newel is pretty simple, just some subfloor adhesive, I know I've got framing back here, and then I've got a plumb line marked on the wall, so I'll just set that in position like so, and put a few screws through it. All right, I got my handrail in. I do like to set the handrails as soon as I can after I set the newel post just to help stabilize everything and ensure something doesn't get bumped out of place while the subfloor adhesive sets underneath. So here, these are gonna be paint grade posts, so I just put a couple GRK screws through there. I'll plug those holes. Did the same thing in this direction. Then on this rail post, use some rail bolts underneath there. But now we're ready to move downstairs. I've got a rake wall to set a newel post down there yet. Let me show you what we've got going on here. I had to notch out this board here and then I used drywall screws to shim it perfectly plumb. So I'm going to fill in with subfloor adhesive and also um, put some wood blocks in here just to fill that gap. But uh, we're going to set this one next. Just like that, if you get it shimmed and set up right to begin with, it'll just go to plumb automatically. 